Today, Jesus reveals himself to us as the good shepherd. He is a shepherd that loves us, his sheep, so much that he is willing to seek us out when we are lost. He is willing to leave the 99, come find us, put us on his shoulders, and bring us back to the safety with the flock. He is a shepherd that loves us so much, he's willing to lay down his own life, to shed his own blood, so that our sins can be forgiven and we can be reconciled with God the Father. But he is also a shepherd that loves us so much that he wants to save us from ourselves. He wants to save us from our hopes and dreams, our own plans, our own ambitions. What do I mean by this? Jesus, our shepherd, came not just to keep us from getting lost. He came not just to keep us from not sinning and to heal us from we sin, but he came us to to give us life and life more abundantly. Yes, for all eternity in heaven with our our heavenly Father and the angels and the saints, but here on earth, Jesus, our shepherd, wants to give us life and life more abundantly. He does not want us to be limited to our own plans and hopes. As good as they may be, they do not share in the eternal perspective of our heavenly Father. A perspective which understands perfectly the rhyme and reason for every detail in the universe, including each one of us. As a person with our hearts, our talents, he knows where each one of us fit best, where we will experience life and life more abundantly. That is what he comes ultimately to shepherd us to. And there are four pointed examples of this in this sanctuary. Number one, Archbishop Brody. His hope and dream for himself was to be a family man, to be a lawyer. He went to Georgetown, got a law degree, and look at him now. Our Archbishop, thanks be to God, life and life abundantly looked different than what he had planned on. Monsignor William J. Skonecki, had gone and planned to be a family man, to be an accountant. He went to Nebraska. He got a CPA degree. He was working as a CPA. But God's plan was different. Look at him now. A priest helping to lead archdiocese and lead people into the faith. Myself, I had planned to be a family man, to be a doctor like my dad. I went to Furman University, went on that path, but God called me to something different. You might be noticing a pattern. Peter, in our first reading, was totally content being a fisherman, doing the family trade, working alongside his father and his brother. But Jesus, the good shepherd, came to him and said, Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. He had little idea of what that meant at the moment, but he followed him, and through so many ups and downs, Jesus shepherded him, and here in this moment, on Pentecost, Jesus is or Peter is fulfilling that prophecy, calling 3,000 souls to repentance. 3,000 souls to be baptized and to move into the life of Jesus. If you never have, today on Good Shepherd Sunday, I invite you to talk to God about all your hopes and dreams. Place them at his feet, but then give him the chance to speak back to you his hopes and dreams for your life. It may be exactly the same. It may be a little bit different. It may be totally different. But today we are called to trust in Jesus that he is a good shepherd and that he only wants us to have life and life abundantly. He may lead you through restful waters. He may lead you through the valley of the shadow of death, but you will fear no evil Because he, your shepherd, is at your side. We have to put our trust in him and be open to what life and life more abundantly looks like from his perspective. 